Hello, welcome. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about some numeric summaries for quantitative data. So we already talked about that five number summary for quantitative data. We're going to still be kind of talking about that, but we're talking about it in terms of its graphical form, which is called a box plot. So a box plot is a type of uh, descriptive statistic for one quantitative variable. Uh, you can actually separate it with different categories, but here's just a simple box plot. Sometimes we will call it a box and whisker plot for the obvious reasons. It has a box and that it has whiskers coming out. But this is essentially the same thing. This is what we're representing. Now, for a box plot, it can be represented either vertically, like you see here, or it can be represented horizontally. In this axis, this y-axis today, this is telling you the actual measurement. So here we have what the variable is, and that's how many hours do you typically sleep a night. And then over here with the y-axis, this is telling you the number of hours. So that means this location here, that would be eight hours. So for a box plot, usually if you're going to read it vertically, the um, horizontal axis has the variable, and then the vertical axis or the y-axis would have the actual measurement at that spot. Now, in a box plot, because it's a graphical display of the five number summary, it actually has a location for each of those five numbers. Sometimes they're harder to see because if you have a data set where a lot of the numbers are condensed, you actually might have part of the five number summary where they're overlapping or they're the same. Here, though, we actually do have all five numbers of the five number summary represented. So up here, this top number or this maximum number is going to be uh, our max. Now, one comment about that, and this is really kind of weird, this is what we call an outlier, right? Because it's outside of the data. And you see a one by it and a two by it. That's kind of confusing, right? Because over here you can see that that's 12 hours of sleep per night. So what does the one and two represent? Essentially, it's the observation in the data set. So sometimes people will uh, look to see if an outlier is maybe a uh, typo, and so it's helpful to know where it is in the data set. So these numbers have only to do with the location inside the data or the observation number. Same is true down here. So this is the smallest number. So if you remember then, that would have to be the minimum. And even though these are outliers, they're still going to be representing part of that minimum, the smallest value, maximum, the largest value. Now, these spots here, this end of this whisker and the end of this whisker here, that might be kind of confusing because you might think that that's the minimum and the maximum. It is not. Those are kind of weird things. It's kind of a mouthful. That is the last observation in the data set that is not considered an outlier. Not very helpful. It's just that's why the line ends there. Those values or those measurements are not outliers. OK, now here is the actual box of the box plot. So the bottom of the box is going to be the next number in the five number summary, which if you remember, we go from the min to Q1, or that first quartile. And then the middle line makes sense that that's going to be the median. Remember, we separate that or denote that with a capital M. And then the top of the box is going to be what we call Q3. So here essentially, and I didn't do that quite straight, but it looks like Q3 would probably be eight. The median would probably be seven. Q1 would be six. The minimum appears to be a two. And then the maximum is at 12. That's the number of hours of sleep. And then remember too that with this uh, five number summary, we break the data up into 25% chunks. So that means between the maximum and Q3, there's 25%. There's 25% between Q3 and the median, 25% between the median and Q1. And then from Q1 down to the minimum, we would also have 25%. So that means that you can say, um, because these two you could add together, we could say 50% of students sleep between six and eight hours per night. Or you could say, 25% uh, of students sleep less than six hours per night. Or you could say 25% of students sleep more than eight hours per night. That's how you would be able to read that. And then the last thing, and we haven't quite got to this if you're watching these videos in my order, 
But the last thing is this actual box uh, would be the interquartile range or the IQR. And that's going to be uh, the distance between Q3 and Q1. Now here is a box plot where you can see that there is no variable represented on the horizontal axis. That just means that this particular computer package that made this box plot didn't include that. Some of the computer packages like this one, which is R, you have much more capability to actually create the whole thing and write on it however you would like. However, you will still notice that this Y axis still contains the number of measurements. We just don't know what those are measuring. But the actual box plot itself is the same. The middle or that box is going to be Q3 and Q1. That middle dissecting line is the median. The largest value here is an outlier, that's the maximum. And here, the smallest value or the minimum is also an outlier. Now here you can see a box plot where there are no outliers at the bottom. We still have this uh, horizontal axis representing, it says how many hours you typically study per day. That is going to be the variable, and then the measurement is on the y-axis. So you can see here there's a lot more outliers, uh, but the actual format of the box plot is similar. Now here you can see what's called a side-by-side -side box plot. That just means it actually added in a second variable. Here it's going to be sex, and it's just separating that one quantitative variable, how many hours you sleep per night, by the sex. And so here we have females and their specific uh, distribution for their sleep hours, and then males for their sleep hours. And this can be really helpful if you want to know if the variability between the groups is similar, if you want to see how spread out they are, if you want to see uh, which one has a higher median. You can see that these are actually very similar. Uh, there's not much difference between those two. And then the last one I have for you today, this uh, box plot is just vertical. So you can represent them horizontal or vertical. Sometimes you'll see a vertical box plot. This is still how many hours you typically study per day, but instead of having that on the horizontal, I switched it to the vertical. So this can be helpful sometimes if you're trying to figure out what the shape of the distribution is. And this is talked about in different videos, but because I have all those outliers out there, when I switch that box plot to its side, I actually can see the skewness happening because I'm going to have to account for those outliers. And we would call this right skewed because that drag or tail is happening on the right hand side. So in future videos, we'll talk about more summaries for quantitative data. See you then.